Uh, hello website this is Fahad from future phones and today we have a Lenovo's board to repair the model number is uh, Lenovo IdeaPad 500s and the board number is LA-D061P so uh, we are going to fix it let's uh, talk about uh, the physical condition of this board and uh, what I found out initially Someone has already worked on this board and uh, this area has been reworked. So you can see this, uh, sorry, I'll take you to the microscope. So this is the microscope view and uh, as you can see this is a current sensitive resistor and there is uh, two wires underneath here. These are basically sensing pins here. So these two pins uh, are right underneath the current sensing resistor so any current that passes through this current sensing resistor these two wires will give this information to the charging IC that how much current is passing through this current sensing resistor so one of this cable was broken so someone has already worked on it this they made a jumper here so this was a bit loose so I fixed it but still we had no uh, power on this uh, motherboard and this is where we are going to test what we can do on this one so 19 volt and 5 amps is our power supply set to and uh, if I give the power and you can see uh, the power is stuck at 0, uh, 0.010 milliamps so is uh, 10 milliamps here the power is stuck here and if I press the power button I have no effect at all on the current consumption on my power supply so this is my power button i believe this was in the corner here yeah so this is the power button here if i press it so i see no effect of the trigger logic on the uh, power supply so that will give us some idea that our issue is in the beginning somewhere and uh, we have to look into the uh, charging section first and then carry on with this uh, repair uh, when we look at the charging section on this board uh, this is where our 19 volt is coming we're getting 19 volts here and then we have a fuse and after that we have a coil here which is receiving 19 volt and then this end of the coil you can see the power is going past this coil it, there is some vias here so this power is going on the other side of the coils and when we come here it comes to this uh, MOSFET here so this is PQ301 and this is where my 19 volt is coming and after that we should receive a uh, gate power supply on this pin which we do not receive here and uh, if we had a power supply on this uh, gate, uh, gate pin we would have here a 19 volt power supply here so we don't have uh, this uh, gate supply here on this pin so this is our problem and this is what we will track and uh, to fix it I uh, will go in the diode mode first and uh, I will check if this get pin is somehow short so you can see it's not shorted there is still some resistance here so it's not short to ground I can also check this MOSFET and you can see we are getting the diode value which is 0 0.52013 and uh, we are not getting any uh, short on this first MOSFET and this is this side is ol which is okay now we'll check this mosfet because these two mosfet can be faulty in this condition and we see here our this mosfet is also okay there is no short on this mosfet we are going to test now uh, this gate power supply is coming from where where is it uh, coming from and if we go into the desktop you can see i've got it open this is the the charging circuit of this motherboard let's uh, talk about this charging circuit first so you can see here 
this is uh, our DCN section on this side and we have a fuse which we already seen and then there is two capacitors and there is two coils and after that this voltage is named as 19 volt win and uh, we saw in the board that it was going through some vias on the other side so the other side it was going to was here uh, on this MOSFET PQ301 what we did not get was this uh, gate power supply and you can see this is the n-channel MOSFET so if 19 volt is coming to the pin number 5 then our gate voltage should be uh, somewhere 24 volt so uh, if we do not get the uh, this voltage then we have to look where it is coming from and you can see uh, this is coming from this uh, signal which is called AC drive and AC drive we have already discussed in our previous videos is uh, usually is the 24 volts and this is generated by this charging IC here which is BQ24780RUYR so BQ series IC is there and uh, we have a AC drive coming from number 4 pin number 4 so we need to look where it is PU301 and I'm quite sure it's gonna be in the same area somewhere so let's go back to the microscope and uh, let's check there so where is the charging I see so PU301 is here so this is our charging I see here you can see so the basic signals to check on this one is we are going to test if the VIN uh, the wind voltage is coming in properly which is the 19 volt in our case right now so let's check so, so in the BQ series ICs usually is the last pin that receive our uh, voltage in which is uh, 19 volt here so let's ch check this So if this is our pin number one, and this is 8, 15, 22, so this is our last IC, and you can see our 19 volt is coming to this pin, and after that we are going to check is our uh, AC detect is coming, which is on pin number six. So pin number six is here. And you can see 2.5 volt. So AC detect ranges between 2.4 and 3.4 somewhere. If anything, any values come here, we assume that this is the right voltage. Uh, AC uh, detect is OK. And next thing we are going to check AC OK signal. If this IC is working properly, then AC OK should come up. And uh, AC OK signal comes at pin number 5. So, so 3, 4, 5. We will check here now. And you can see we do not get the AC OK signal. So if you don't get AC OK signal, that means this IC has some issues creating the power. Now, next thing we can check if this IC is generating the LDO voltages, which is a 5 volt. And as soon as the VIN comes to the IC, the next thing happens is the LDO voltages are generated. So we will check LDO voltages at pit number 20 pin number 24 okay so we will check the LD voltages at pin number 24 so this is 22 23 24 22 23 24 so you see the LDO voltages are not there so LDO voltages are not present so at this point I'm going to remove my charger go back in the diode range and I'll look for any shortage around this IC if there is any shortage of this IC. We have already checked the MOSFETs, so MOSFETs look good. Uh, now is the turn to check this uh, LDO voltage line. So 22, 23, 24. And we are getting a healthy resistance here. So that means internally this IC has probably some issues. But we will still check more and we will check any uh, components that are short to ground in this area here you can see so this is the ground 
right this is the resistance here so that's why the so so there is no major shortage on uh, any other components our best guess is to uh, remove this ic first and uh, change another one i already got the ic with me so we'll just waste no time and change this ic That's removed. I'm going to retit this area with leaded solder before I put a new ICO on, so easier. That's fine. This is my replacement IC from another board. So we <coughs> so this uh, dot will be the pin number one. So we will follow this dot to this uh, indicator point here. Let's put the IC back on. Oh. So this IC is installed. Let's clean it up. So after we click the IC, uh, let's check what is happening at the IC here and uh, our condition at the uh, DC power supply is same, it's still taking 0 0.010 milliamp but we need to check if our 5 volt LDO is being generated. So but before we check we are going to check if VIN is coming. Yeah. So 19 volt is coming at this point and uh, I'll take you to the microscope actually. Our 19 volt is coming here and uh, our pin number 6 was AC detect. So we have 2.5 which is okay. AC okay is pin number 5. Uh, pin number five. So we're getting 3.3. .3. So AC okay is fine. And now uh, I think pin number 24 was the LDO 5 volt. So we are getting LDO 6 volt, that's fine. It's usually 5 volt or 6 volt LDO here. So that's not a problem. Now, next thing we are going to check the MOSFETs. Okay, so we were supposed to receive AC drive on the gate pin, pin of this MOSFET. So if 19 volt is coming here, so if 19 volt is coming here, then uh, we should get 24 volt here. So we are receiving 24 volt at the gate power supply and you can see 18.9 so 19 volt is passing through this MOSFET going in here and we have a gate power supply here also so this is also AC drive so let's check what's here so we are receiving 24 volt here also and after this MOSFET this 19 volt is going in this current sensing resistor here and we should also get here 18.9 okay these two pins which were here they should also receive 19 volt 
and uh, if we get 19 volt on pin this pin here and we are receiving 19 volt on this test point here so so these two pins are called acp and acn basically this is a uh, part of the current se sensing circuit in the ic and the current passes through this resistor and these two pins they gather data and uh, this data is read by the ic these two uh, pins here acp and acn they will check how the voltage is flowing through this current sensing resistor if it finds any uh, surge in the power going past this uh, current sensing resistor uh, these two pins they will take this information to the charging ic and if charging ic uh, takes any readings where the voltage is running faster than uh, expected so say 19 volt is flowing really really fast or is surge in the uh, consumption from the board then these two pins will signal the ic uh, the ic can read this information and it can shut the power off now uh, i'm quite sure uh, here if we have the power at the current sensing resistor so we should have power at the power button as well which is here I keep forgetting this power button the power button is here so now if you see here we are getting some voltage 3.3 volt and if i press it the board should power on for this i want you to go into this cam here so if you look at the power supply now so as you see is increasing the ampere uh, consumption here to, is going to 380 and 400 this is usually a sign when the board has powered on obviously if LCD is not connected then the consumption is less so let's connect the LCD and check if we get the display and for this I think we have a display here our display and we have the so let's check if we get the display by pressing this button power button so you can see now we can give it a test the I'm going to press the power button and you can see the consumption here and we should also get the display so you can see the consumption is now 0.500 milliamps before it was 300 milliamps so uh, because we have connected the LCD now so the the board is uh, consuming more power and this is what we can see here so we got a reset here we are going to 700 now so the more brighter the LCD is the more consumption you could see on the but uh, dc power supply here so this job is done thank you for watching do like and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment section and we will see you in the next video thank you very much